Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Brand Launch Global Town Hall. Just want to start and set the agenda, if I can, for today. Um, Andreas will start by reviewing the brand in the context of Vision 2020. I'm going to come back up and talk about uh, the rationale behind our strategic rebrand. And then Carol Bryce will review some of the key elements, uh, as well as some visual and tone of voice uh, opportunities. At the end, we're going to open up for questions. So we're going to start in the room first in New York. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and someone with a microphone will find you and uh, you can ask your question. If you're outside of New York, we, we kindly ask you to submit your question via the chat function through your site coordinator. Okay, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Andreas Fibig. Thank you, Mike, and uh, I'm very excited to be here. And Mike, we can be very happy and proud what uh, was achieved in the last couple of months in terms of building a new visual design and image of, of IF, IFF. I would like to talk you, uh, talk you through how it makes sense in terms of our, of our Vision 2020. What is the rationale for doing all of that, all of that effort, despite the fact that actually our, our last uh, branding and website was probably a bit dated, and it really makes sense to do something more fresh, something more energizing for us. And then afterwards, as Mike said, we have time for questions. Let's start with uh, our vision slide. And the context here is that uh, the Vision 2020 should be reinforced by our, our new, new branding. Last week, we had our senior leaders meeting in, in Miami, and we talked a lot about uh, the elements of the strategy, and we talked about execution. And one of the elements is becoming uh, our customer's partner of choice. And I personally believe that's exactly, exactly where this fits into it, because it will help us actually to communicate our messages to our customers in a much better way. So we can really prioritize the high value opportunities, we can leverage our consumer insights we're having, and we can proactively marketing our, our products. And this will master a very consistent communication to our customers, but to our internal audience as well. And that's something which I believe is really, really important. And even if we in the future look for uh, other companies who are joining the IFF family, like Lucas Myers or, or Ortens, for example, they fit very nicely under the umbrella of the IFF brand and can, can make an impact on our, our brand value here as well. So it's all about the marketing of, uh, of our products, the marketing of our, our company, and a very consistent communication. So today, you will see how this brand and, and the branding initiatives fits not just into the strategy, but in our 126 years of history as well. So we really made, made sure with the, with the new branding that we are not going to something which is just new, but something which is new and fits into our history as well. So the unveiled new website, the visual identity, and the refreshed tone of voice and the spotlight of our, of our vision and the innovative focus are really part of that, of that piece. So for us, it's the next uh, chapter in the journey of IFF to an even more successful, successful uh, future. And I'm, uh, and I hope all the other IFFers are, are very proud that we have this, and that we have now a, a new approach internally and externally to our customers. And now Mike will explain this much more in detail. Mike. Okay, it's really nice to have you as a setup man for once. So, uh, so, so that, that's a great thing. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to start off with, uh, you know, it's, it's not just a, a corporate initiative. This, this was really an extensive project that we, uh, we actually engage pretty much globally, uh, a lot of employees around the world. What I wanted to do here is I, I wanted to show the core team, and this team was really, uh, you know, working day to day, delivering the brand objectives. And then we have an extended team with, with more members that basically had a, uh, allowed us the ability to go in and pulse and channel check some of the strategic decisions, and they helped kind of guide the direction. Um, if I can, I'd like to have my, my Grammys or Oscar minute, and I actually want to applaud everybody here because I think they've done a terrific job. It's not just the people here. It's, it was IT. It was people in the BU. It was facilities. I mean, it really was a bunch uh, of people, so I think they they owe uh, a lot of congratulations. So join me, please. Okay, so then uh, just, just to put in more context, supporting our, our branding uh, team, we, we, we engage an external partner by the name of Future Brand. They're part of Interpublic Group, so it's a major media firm uh, based in, in, in New York. Uh, and you can see some of 
you know, they're in advertising, public relations, you know, branding events, media services. But Future Brand really focuses in on brand strategy um, and brand development. They have 500 people globally in 20 offices world, kind of worldwide, really fitting our footprint so we can, again, pulse and channel check, uh, you know, the, the local cultures to our new brand. Uh, you can see some examples of their, their clients. So you can see Intel, UPS, American Airlines, Microsoft, but also Obadi Cario, uh, Nespresso, Cadillac. I mean, re really high quality clients that I think we tried to emulate in our brand. And you could probably see some of that come through. So the case for change was, re was really simple. Um, we, we had the energy to refresh. I mean, we lacked kind of clear branding guidelines and structure. Our competitors refreshed several times. So it was an opportunity for us to, to kind of make sure we get out in the forefront. And it aligns well, as Andreas talked about, to Vision 2020. But most importantly, uh, it was about uh, really getting our branding on a consistent uh, manner. So goals, very, very clear. Uh, support Vision 2020, drive consistency, produce efficiencies, maximize returns, uh, and, and be different, right? So it's about Vision 2020 is about accelerating growth, growth through differentiation, and this allows us to, to stand out kind of on our own. Deliverables. Uh, we achieved most of this slide. I think when we started the project, it, it actually grew. So it's, it's, it, it was probably half that, and it kind of, as we progressed through, we've uncovered some stones, which is, which is a great thing because it means we engaged the organizations and we had a lot of ideas kind of boil up. So we, we've got, I would say, probably 95% of the way here. Uh, more to come. It's kind of an evolution of the brand. But, uh, you know, what I, what I want to do is for me, I want to highlight a couple of three elements that I think is important from a strategy standpoint, a corporate communications and a marketing perspective. And then Carol will kind of go through some of the elements uh, uh, rest on the list. So first and foremost, it, it, it all starts with the master brand strategy. So this is our approach for communicating a broad portfolio of integrated offerings and solutions. So, so very simple, the IFF logo is the parent brand, right? So everything we do now supports the master brand strategy, the master brand, which is IFF, the, our 126-year-old innovative company. And so all resource efforts focused on driving that, uh, that, that initiative. And, and most of the individual solutions and offerings probably won't receive any more visual treatment. It's really bringing those down and turning up the IFF brand so we make sure we stand out. Just, just a couple examples, GE follows us, Dow Chemical follows us, Nielsen uh, and Oracle. It's, it's very successful given the diversity of the portfolio. Carrying that one step further, uh, it was, we carried over to the acquired companies that, uh, that joined the IFF family over the last 18, 20 months. And so you can see uh, on, on the slide, it's, it's really about locking up IFF logo uh, with, with some of these, uh, I'll say minor brands, but, but a big part of the IFF master brand strategy with LMR, Ottens, Aramore, and Lucas Meyer. So it's, it's really about leveraging the, the blue from IFF, the identified blue that, we're, that from an organizational standpoint we've known for so long. And, and it contains it so people can look and feel and understand that this is the master brand strategy of IFF and they're part of the IFF family. Brand architecture. Uh, this, is, this is really about how do we want to position ourselves externally. It's, it's really uh, reflecting our core capabilities, our strengths. You know, makes communicating our story easier, more consistent and compelling. It organizes our portfolio more intuitively so people have an idea and understand what IFF's value proposition uh, are and, and, and can be. And then ultimately naming strategy. So you know, we, we are a very entrepreneurial spirit. We do a lot of uh, creative things, uh, so, so, which is good. But we tend to recreate the wheel a little bit. And so this is really about how do we take a systematic approach and step back and make sure we're elevating the right brands that differentiate us, focus on 80% or the ones that are 20% but drive 80% of the value, and, and kind of de-emphasizing de the, the areas where we have opportunities to, to, to reshift or reallocate focus. And then brand governance. Uh, this, this one's really about just managing the brand, right? So to be successful, it's going to take people, processes, and tools. And so Carol's going to walk you through some stuff, which I think does a really good job at helping us and facilitating you know, all the experience touch points and making sure they're aligned with the master brand strategy and the IFF brand overall. To kind of help with this, facilitate this process and oversee this, we created a brand council. And so it's probably composed of nine or 10 uh, individuals around the world, heads of marketing, people, representatives from legal, IT, uh, R&D, and really kind of coming together to help manage the brand. So just, just at a very high level, they'll make strategic decisions. They'll stay on top of best practices and sharing. You know, they'll act as brand champions at all, at all levels. Um, and then ultimately, I, I put this in there, uh, they'll act as brand police, right? So it's important that we kind of adhere to this. It was a major investment. It was, it was a, it's a great opportunity for us to convey our message. So we've got to make sure we, we stay on brand. So that's, that's all I actually had uh, with that. I'd like to take it over, pass it over to Carol. 
Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Andreas. And thanks, everybody, for joining us either alive or uh, virtually, or in person virtually. So um, <laughs> you never know. Um, <laughs> So uh, one of the key points of this rebrand was to, as, as Andreas and Mike have talked about, is aligning the brand with Vision 2020. And this is kind of perfect timing. It was like, it, you know, we have um, Andreas putting this new energy into the organization, setting us on this great path for success through Vision 2020. And we just celebrated our 125th anniversary. So like this, all of these pieces kind of came together beautifully to create a perfect moment for us to rebrand, to take a look at who we are, who we've been, and where we want to go. And how do we leverage, and I think Mike uh, and Andreas both touched on this, it's not just about putting a new brand arbitrarily over the organization, it's understanding who we are at a very deep level and creating the brand that actually will help amplify who we are and help us be successful into the future. So um, let me show you how all of that played out. So um, our brand strategy is composed of uh, different discrete components that all kind of work together. Um, so the foundation, as I mentioned, is built on who we are as an organization. So we ha held a lot of stakeholder uh, uh, interviews and um, did a deep dive into the organization, into our history, into our products, processes, our approaches. And what bubbled up over and over was this core idea of what if. And if you think about it, it's a very simple question, but it opens up this absolute universe of possibilities. And when you think of some of the things that we've accomplished in our history, it, it really, it feels very real. We are a company that constantly challenges ourselves and we're not afraid to ask big and brave questions. Um, earlier this year, we launched our new purpose statement. And um, the purpose statement, so we moved from we create unique scent and taste experiences people love, which was fine, it served its purpose at the time, but we really needed something more aspirational, something bigger, something that also talked about who we want to be in the future. So now it's we are the catalyst for discoveries that spark the senses and transform the everyday. So the wording is very deliberate, it's really key, uh, it can't really be cut down. And it talks about teamwork, partnership, uh, exploration, discoveries, right, the words right in there. And then the impact that we have on the senses um, of people around the world. And I know that every one of us takes that responsibility very, very seriously. Nobody ever forgets that everything we do touches people around the world, our friends, our neighbors, our families, and that's key. So, um, Hopefully you've noticed the little teasers that we've been sending out uh, over the past few weeks that highlight some of our historical pioneering firsts. And, um, it, and it, they're based on our brand positioning of pioneering first. So um, as I mentioned, we have this 126 year legacy of doing things that have actually changed and influenced the industry and influenced um, how we operate as an organization and how the whole industry plays out and, and, and creates its products and processes. So that's a big deal. Um, so we decided that Pioneering First actually is a great position for IFF to really own in terms of our brand and, and, and versus our competition. Um, so we're really proud of it and you will see that concept woven into a lot of our collateral and a lot of our materials. Um, it, it's also a fresh take if you think about it on innovation. Everybody talks about innovation. Um, I think Pioneering First is actually a really more emotional, descriptive, and, uh, and aspirational way of describing that. Brand personality. So um, this is, these, are not, these are not new values. Let me just say that right away. This actually just guides the tonality and our imagery of how we communicate via our brand. So um, it's a little tough with a company this big and entrepreneurial to stay consistent. So these are further guidelines to help us kind of pressure test what we're saying and how we're saying it, uh, what kind of images that we're using. So our brand personality is courageous, approachable, 
thought-provoking, and focused. And these different aspects, you'll be able to read about um, more about this um, in the tools that we provide for you. But if you think about those, uh, those brand personality aspects, they're actually very apt for IFF. And they are dialed up or dialed down. In terms of our communications, we dial up or dial down those personality attributes based on who we're talking to, what we're trying to say, what we're trying to get across, what the channel is. So it's not, it's not just this one note thing. There's a lot of flex in that. And finally, brand values. Um, our brand values are our values. These are the values that we embody as IFFers. And this is what these talk about our behaviors. And this is all very much part of the brand. So um, they haven't changed. It's still passion, creativity, expertise, and empowerment. We've restated it a little bit to uh, be a little bit more action-oriented. We are passionate. We are creative. We are experts at what we do. And we are empowered. But they're still very much part of the brand. And, they, and, and I hope you agree that they actually fit nicely into the brand positioning. So how does all of this stuff come together? These are a lot of different components and parts. Um, I want to show you our brand video. and. Um, and hopefully you will kind of get the feeling of our brand positioning and personality through the video. Can we start? Let's roll. Our senses hold extraordinary power. They arouse our feelings, take us back in time and guide us through many of life's discoveries. Driven by our passion for sparking the senses, we combine nature and science to ignite everyday moments in people's lives. Inspired by the world around us and dedicated to helping it thrive, we are explorers, discoverers, inventors. Built on a legacy of pioneering firsts, we are the ones who never stop. Imagining, improving, always asking, what if? What if we could make healthy choices more mouthwatering? What if we could add another dimension? And what if we could do it without depleting our precious planet? We are united in our passion for innovation always asking, evolving, finding the next first, finding groundbreaking sensorial experiences that move the world. We'll take that. Thank you. Um, OK, so you've seen the platform, and you fully understand our direction, no doubt. But what about the tools? Um, so Mike mentioned that we are putting tools and processes in place to help people uh, help build a consistent brand around the world. And one of the key, and we really feel like this thing is, is kind of our game changer. Um, we have developed a brand management tool, and, uh, which is basically it's an online website. It's named, the name of it is Brand Catalyst. And you'll be getting the link to that very shortly. And basically what it does is it, it connects us all. Uh, it gives us a one-stop shop for all of our brand assets, for anything digital. Our videos are up there. Um, if you need a logo, you have a logo. If you, need, um, if you need PowerPoint decks, you'll find them there. Our image library is up there. And it's, it is evolving. What you see is just kind of the, what you'll see today is just kind of the first step. It will grow. And uh, we will be uploading more assets to it as we have more, as they come, become available. So we see it as a work in progress. And it's something that will be growing with our brand. Um, so as Mike stated, we cannot overstate how important it is to stay on brand. So I'm really hoping that you find this as an inspiring place to go um, to see the, material, the wealth of materials that are available. Um, oh, oh, and it's go also available mobily. So that's kind of cool, too. So you'll be able to get to it on your phone and on your tablets. 
So um, why don't we start the video on that as well? And it's just a short little snippet that'll show you a little bit about Brand Catalyst, but you'll have the link and you can go into it after the meeting. So that is our Brand Catalyst tool. Everybody has access to it. And uh, like I said, you'll get the link, um, I think, just shortly after the meeting today. So um, I hope you make very good use of it. And actually, we really look forward to your feedback on it, on how we can make it even better. Um, so the slide that's up right now, it's just a super, super, super high level snapshot of our visual identity system. You'll be able to dive into it more um, thoroughly in the Catalyst tool. But um, I just wanted to give you a super high level view. But over the next few slides, you'll see some examples of um, different aspects of the branding collateral. So some stationary, um, we do have new business cards. And we have actually a couple of different types that you'll see. I hope you love them. Our imagery, this is uh, really one of the key pieces. Uh, so just so that you're aware, the Feinstein images, the ones, the fruits, the flowers, the vegetables, those all go away. And we're now focusing in this direction. Um, I hope you will agree that these images are much more contemporary in feel and look. Uh, they are, from our perspective, they're much more of the moment. They're not posed, and this is really, really critical. Um, you'll notice that none of these look like people have been lining up just so to have their pictures taken. We really want our photos to have more of a fresh, Insta almost like an Instagram kind of feel, um, something that's just a lot more relatable and human. So um, we're really thrilled with this new direction, and again, hope you are too. Um, here's an example of what a sustainability or an annual report might look like. Um, this is uh, leveraging more fragrance type images, but we have plenty of flavor images as well. Uh, again, a super high snapshot of our new PowerPoint templates. These are, we only have, now have one template style available, but it is very, very flexible. Uh, you'll see this on the Brand Catalyst tool. We have several different colorways. Um, very flexible in terms of how you can engage with imagery and color and uh, quotes and charts. And all of the information is there to help you be successful. And um, I don't want to forget social media. Um, we have refreshed our, the look and feel of all of our social media channels. And um, just a little note, if you're not following us on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and uh, Facebook, you should. You're missing out. And um, I'm going to show you the last video of the presentation. And if you haven't had a little sneak peek already of the new IFF.com, anybody have seen it yet? OK, we got a couple. All right, uh, let's just go to the video on, that gives you just a little overview of that, but you should take a look at it. I th hope you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised.
So um, do go in to see the new IFF.com. I know you're going to miss the old site, but sometimes we just have to let those things go. <laughs> so this is just the beginning. Um, I know that we have hit a lot of touch points, but I know that we have by no means hit all of them. As the brand evolves, as we all become more comfortable with what the brand is and what it can be, I'm sure more touch points will get exposed. And through the Brand Catalyst tool, you now have a, and with the Brand Council, we now have a way to holistically evolve the brand, um, which I think is great. Uh, I think we've got a really solid start. One thing I really want to leave you with is this idea that every one of us is a brand ambassador. There's, although we have people who are brand ambassadors who helped us with the setup of this meeting and, and um, with some of the, uh, with the, with the work that we've done at the beginning, we really need every single person to take on the mantle of brand ambassador. It's all of our responsibilities and we all benefit from it. So um, do, do take that on. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, and I think that's the, I'm at the end here. So I am going to turn this over to, uh, oh, we're going to do the questions now? OK. We're going to do questions now. There we go. OK. So first, um, so let me just hold a moment. And we'll bring Mike and Andreas up. And uh, first, we are going to open the questions up to the room. And then um, after that, we will invite anybody um, from our remote locations to please put their questions in via chat. Can I have the first question, actually? When do we have our intranet site? Next year. It's a great question. Yeah. So yeah, it's, when next year? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Valerie? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how do I not put my foot in my mouth on this? Yeah. Um, Look, we're, we're targeting. It was part of the project, Andres. We, we focused really to get the external component of it in, and so I think you've seen it, a lot of success. We're going to migrate that success into the intranet, so the goal would probably be mid-year. Mid-year. To okay. get it. So very, we, very we'll, soft. We'll make, yeah, yeah, mid -year. very soft okay, year. But, but, <laughs> but we will get but it. We will That's get good. There. Yeah. It's a big component of it. I mean, I yeah. think it's, uh, it's a critical aspect. Yep. Hi. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Francine Moore, and I work in the Department of Fine Fragrance. I just had a question, because uh, I've been a webmaster and I've worked web services in previous jobs. Are we still going to stay on Internet Explorer for the intranet and even for launching this? Because it's just in my experience, having worked on HTML and coding, that it's a very unstable platform uh, with a tremendous amount of limitations. That's just my subjective opinion. Is there any desire to move that on to Chrome or something there. a little bit more contemporary? Yeah, I, I think part of, part of it will be when we kick off the intranet project, which will probably be tomorrow, honestly. I think my group will re-sit re, re together and, and think about the, the strategy element to it. I think we have to look. Uh, we hear a lot of feedback on SharePoint, Internet Explorer, and how we want to do it. I mean, we're, we're not the experts from that, so we'll leverage the IT expertise within the organization. But we will sit, and, and we're happy to have the discussion with you if you have some pretty good experience in the past. But, but I think it's an evolution at this point. It's, it's probably too early to comment, so we would just we defer probably to, uh, to early next year before we decide which direction we head. Any other questions in the room? Okay. okay. Do so we have any questions on chat? Yep. We do. We have two questions. Um, the first one is, can you talk about our responsibility to the new brand? What is the expectation that we will follow the branding to a T? Mm -hmm. Mike, yeah, so the expectation is everyone is going to follow the brand. Uh, <laughs> so so, <laughs> so very, very, very uh, straightforward type of an answer. I think it's important, right? We, we spent a lot of time and effort and resources to really build this brand platform and this visual element, tone of voice. I mean, Carol touched on a lot of it. This is just, is just a top layer of it. I mean, we have to go in as an organization and dig deep and really try to understand the brand and try to make that promise throughout our kind of our day-to-day -day activities within the organization. So this means if you're working on board presentations for as we prepare for next week or we're working on external press releases, uh, which we'll send out this morning to announce the, the rebrand, it, it needs to embed the element of branding. And so we're, we're asking everybody within the organization to, to really to leverage us, leverage the brand council, come to us, you know, ask for advice, ask for help. We're happy to help in any way we can. 
And then we're going to do the same to you. We're going to come and see where you had your successes, and we're going to try to share of this best practice. In. But, but I would say, ultimately, the, the best practice is that we should all abide by the new brand platform. Let, let me supplement to, to that. And I, I actually believe it, it makes our lives uh, much easier than before, because uh, what we have is we have a very flexible toolbox here. And we really can basically achieve a lot of things with these different tools. And I really would like to encourage you to look into it, what you can do with it. We are just doing it. We have our, our board meeting next, uh, uh, next week. So all the presentations will be in the new format. And it already uh, gets, a, gets a good good traction on it. It's not just, it looks better, but it's, it's also easier to do. So don't be afraid that this is, uh, let's say, limiting uh, creativity. I think it simplifies our life and in a much more professional way. And that's the reason why I believe we all should adhere to, uh, to our, our, our new brand. And it all loads up to the IFF brand. We have another question from a colleagues in New Jersey. What do we do with our old IFF swag? Um, <laughs> do we just throw away business cards and bags? No, 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 well, maybe. Hold on. Let me ask permission first. No. No. <laughs> no ultimately, I think that the, the philosophy is an evolution, right? So, so really, as you use your business cards, as you use your, your swags, so to speak, you know, as it starts to deplete, reorder based on the new brand. This is not for everybody to leave uh, this meeting, all 7,000 of us, and go and order new business cards. Um, it, it won't be successful. So, so we ask you to kind of work through that. But then as you have opportunities to kind of pulse in a new brand and start to make that evolution, please do. I mean, that would be the requirement. And in all honesty, it, it ha it's not just a cost element involved in it. it it's a sustainability element exactly. as well. So I just exactly. came back from Paris. And sending a thing, we throw all this stuff away <laughs> and get new ones is probably not the right message. So that's the reason why we, we use what we have and then we face in the new one. Exactly. We, we have one more in New York, if that's OK. Hi, my name is Alexis Andrelakis. I actually work on the P&G account in both Consumer and Fine. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, with this refreshed branding, and specifically referencing social media, obviously it seems that there's been quite an effort there to refresh. Is there going to be any type of an initiative to really engage at the customer level beyond even the client level to make IFF and fragrance houses in general less anonymous, if you will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's a great uh, it's a it's a great question. You know, we we hired a. a digital media person uh, that's responsible for social media, internet, and all elements of, I'll say, digital media. Uh, she's actually standing right next to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> surprise. Uh, fitting hi, fitting question. Uh, but, but, but definitely. I, I think what we have to think about is a strategic element to it, and you want to make sure you're borderlining that we don't cross the line. I mean, we, we have some of the consumer-facing brands, so you can see some of the images around the room in New York, but, but also with the video. And so we just need to make sure that we can leverage social media strategically, that we don't get ourselves into a little bit of trouble going too far. And so ultimately, it's, it's going to be a balancing act. I think that will be part of the, the Brands Council's uh, effort, mm -hmm. is to really see if we can explore new opportunities for IFF via social media. And for the company in general, we want to raise the profile a bit more so that people know more about IFF. Correct. And I think that's, that's very helpful also in the recruiting process of new talents into the company. And actually, it creates some opportunity for collaborations with other uh, firms and other, uh, let's say, academic institutions as well. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, th I think we have a couple more on. We have one more. One more. Oh, sorry. Good morning, everyone. I'm Damaris Ricard. I work on the Unilever account. And um, my question is regarding you're updating the letterhead, business cards, which is all very nice. But what our customers mainly see are our labels. Is there any thought to updating those as well? Yeah, that's, that's in the process. We, it's not ready now, but that's definitely part of the pipeline of uh, touch points. We're constantly uncovering uh, new touch points. That is a big one that's been brought out several times. So that's definitely on our, um, on our list, and it's a high priority. Any more in uh, New York? OK, go back. Uh. We have a question from our colleagues in Gebze, Turkey. Um, what is going to happen to all the technology and capability sub-brands that we currently have and that are pretty inconsistent? Oh, very good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. I, I think it's alignment between the marketing leads, uh, between the both business units, as well as kind of the corporate master brand 
strategy element is really coming together and understanding and implying that, uh, that brand new architecture that I, I referenced in my, in my presentation. I mean, w the goal would really be to bifurcate our portfolio offering, focusing on the elements that are differentiating and making the investments behind those and de-emphasizing those that are, are uh, I'll say, more of a me too type of approach. We're a 126 year old organization. We're well known for what we do. You know, if you think about tonalities, basic tonalities and flavors, I think most of our customers would say synonymously, IFF is a good go-to partner. But it's really how do we take the areas of technology as an, an innovation and really re-emphasize those and think about our marketing strategy uh, holistically. And I think we're going to do that with the two business units to make sure that, you know, together we're, we're, we're making uh, inroads there. Mm -hmm. we have another question, and this one is from our colleagues in Chennai, India. Um, what is going to be the immediate change as we interact with customers? Mm -hmm. I, you, it's I think that one of the things they're going to see off the bat we, is our, hopefully the, our new website, if they go there, um, through PowerPoint presentations, collateral. As the, all of these things change out, that's going to be kind of the primary touch points. Once we get our labels done, um, we'll get that as well, and other packaging elements. But, but it starts today. I mean, mm -hmm. to be clear, there, there, and there's, messaging. Yeah, there's messaging from a press release standpoint. There's also customer letters. Whether you're in IFF, I'll say organic IFF or old IFF, Lucas Meyer, Ottens, it's really how do we engage and how to reinforce the brand. So we ask the commercial team mm -hmm. to leverage the tools we're providing and to make sure you reach out and touch your customer you know, within the next couple days uh, to make sure the responsibility is that they're aware of the change. And then as you start thinking about your follow-up touch points, really reference back the brand and see if you can leverage uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in the coming forward uh, mm -hmm. conversations. And in terms of customers, the first big bang we will have it, it's at the ACI. So for all the fragrance people, I think that's, that's a very important Congress here in the US in, uh, in January, where everything is basically designed towards the new branding, and that's our first, let's say, massive interaction with our customers Correct. with the new branding. Mm -hmm. Correct. And we have uh, another question from Hilversum. Are there plans for an IFF app? That's a good one. Uh, Where's the well, app? The, well, well, the, website, <laughs> the website is already mobile. So I, depend, kinda, I think it depends on what they mean by an app. Uh, but our website is already mobile yeah. and available on your smartphone or tablet. So, um, yeah, I'm again, not sure I, what the app would be. I think we have to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think we hit all the key elements. So, you think about all the social media aspects of uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. You, YouTube, Instagram. I think we hit the main five channels that are the biggest drivers of it. Mm -hmm. I think our website is fully functional, it's fully mobile. So, there's an yeah. element and dynamic there that will we'll engage people even more. From an app perspective, it's really what we're trying to accomplish. If it's a business strategic decision that you want to create a, an app to create a touch point versus uh, our, our customers and the commercial team, we could talk about it strategically. I think it ultimately lies from a decision standpoint within the business of what works best and what's most feasible. But, but we're open to having that conversation. It would be probably good for the colleague in Hilversum just get offline together with, with the two of yeah, you that'd be great. and figure out what, what to do. By the way, it works uh, fantastically. I, I, I tried it yesterday night because you always are curious whether it really works at, at 9.30 at night here. I took it on my iPhone and, and it worked. So I can wait for that. So that, that works. It didn't work here actually on our yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's, that's a different story. It didn't work in iPhone. <laughs> that's right. We have another question, this one from Barcelona. Um, is our technical documentation going to be updated as well, such as MSDS, PDS, COA? Uh, I'm not sure what those acronyms are, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if anybody's uh, from Benny Carlo, Nacho, I think you're in the room, you, you may have to translate. Um, <laughs> But, but I think our letterheads uh, through IFMAN, yeah. uh, if I reference my previous experience, uh, customer quote letters, I think that's stuff we have to migrate over, yeah. and, it, and it's coming. I mean, it's on the docket to do it. It's really now, it's the touch points that we ask everybody in the organization to come to us and inundate us Correct. with those requests to make sure we prioritize the highest opportunities to make the changes. Yep. Another question from Chennai, India. Are we changing the email signature style? Yes, we are. <laughs> you will see that. We're sending out an email um, shortly. Uh, that has kind of a quick start guide for all employees and the email signature is referenced on that and you'll be able to download the the new signature from uh, the brand catalyst site it's simpler it doesn't have a logo um, so I, it's a little bit of a change yeah and if I could take the opportunity Please. to to, to uh, make my first uh, brand council request 
if we can delete all the uh, attachments and imagery and stuff below our logo, I mean, there's a lot of creativity within the organization that we were not consistent. So really use the template we have. I, I can appreciate we all have different requests and different desires and, and, and hopes that we can try to achieve with our signature. But as a corporation standpoint, I mean, we want to follow the master brand strategy, so this would be applicable globally. So we'd ask if you go back today and update that, and there'll be a follow-up communication. Yep. But don't be afraid. Your name stays as it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from Lucas Mayer. Um, for from the where? presentation format for LMC, um, for customer presentations, do we have both IFF and Lucas Mayer cosmetic logos? Interesting. We do have the, we do have the lockups. And uh, we're still cycling through getting the lockups uh, attached to all of the various components. We have them for some, and there we're working through getting them on all of the others. So we will have so the PowerPoint, et cetera. Yes, we'll have uh, we'll have lockups for all of them. Uh, a question from Isando, South Africa: uh, Will sites receive new posters for display? We, uh, <laughs> you won't receive posters um, but we do have um, we do have files of some of the banners and posters that have been created already that we will share on the brand catalyst site to I mean it doesn't make much financial sense to just like have it done here and then ship it all over the world but um, but we will have the files available so that they can be printed out in the Perfect. way that makes most sense to the to the facility excellent Another question is, how do we go about sharing this in our profiles on LinkedIn? Wow. Oh. So, so you, you, you can see wow. even our new boilerplate, uh, we, we talk about meeting IFF right, versus about IFF in a very non-traditional way of communicating, really focusing on the, the brand personalities that Kara referenced. And I forget them, but it's courageous. Courageous, thought-provoking, uh, focused. focused. I'm missing the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Approachable, approachable, yeah. yeah. Clearly, I'm not approachable. Uh, None of us so, 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 uh, fr from that element, I think you, you know, from a LinkedIn, it's, it's actually a great question because we did some channel checks and going through a lot of your profiles within your organization, and not just in New York, but globally, and really to understand the power of, of social media and how we can, can connect. Uh, some of us use it very well, and some of us don't use it very well. And I think it's, it's, we should take it as an opportunity as an organization because you, know, you can share, you, you have direct access, direct contacts with customers, with other employees, with, with, with the, the bigger population with just outside of IFF. And so it's an opportunity for us to showcase the new brand. And so we would invite you to look at some of the elements that we put out in our press release today about IFF and how we describe ourselves. You've seen it in the video. We'd ask if you have social media accounts to really try to express that, link that, share that. I think it's a good opportunity for us to, again, to continue to, to reinforce this message. And then I think the next element is, uh, you know, Valerie had to tackle the, the website project. And so she, she th that was her primary focus. I think now going forward, besides the intranet project, <laughs> um, she will help work with everybody from a, from a standpoint of how do we really maximize our social media uh, presence from an IFF perspective in, the, in, in 2016. And one other call out that I'd like to make is that part of our branding exercise was also to refresh our tone of voice. Basically, literally, how do we express ourselves? And um, that document is also on the Brand Catalyst site, so you'll be able to kind of see good examples of before and after. And the, uh, the boilerplate is actually a great example that we went from this kind of stodgy, very um, uh, uh, non-emotional, non-aspirational boilerplate to something that has a little bit more emotion and a little more aspiration, a little friendlier sounding, going from That's about right. IFF to meet IFF, really putting more of a human face on the organization. And um, I know that not everybody is necessarily a writer, but I think you can at least gain a little bit of inspiration by looking at the document and seeing how you can weave in stuff in a very simple way into your profiles on LinkedIn, into how you talk about the company. We have another, oh. Another yes, question. Yes, Mary. I'm Mary Jimperson. I work in a New York office Can you hold that closer? with uh, Veronique Fermal in perfumery. I have a question regarding the uh, media. When we are chatting, tweeting, and so forth, we ought to be careful of privacy in terms of our company mm -hmm. business information. Culturally, we have to be aware of that. Perhaps some may not know that, but I think we need to have uh, some way of 
getting this out to many others in the company who may not have that awareness. Yeah. Well, I would like to call out the code of conduct um, because that is actually, that's a great, great call out, Mary. But that is, that is actually called out in our code of conduct. We do, and she's absolutely right, we all have a responsibility no matter where we're sharing that we have to be aware of our responsibility to keep proprietary information private. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have a media policy. I mean, let, let's express that. Absolutely. It's actually on my uh, desk to send out uh, probably next week oh, yeah. uh, to, to remind everybody that we have to adhere to this. Use us as your, as your point of contact if someone reaches out to you or if someone wants information, and we'll then work with the legal organization to make sure we're not sharing proprietary information. But, but again, it's, it's very easy to quickly take a picture within our lab and show something and a label pops up or something. So we ask you to kind of uh, use your discretion there and really be cautious to, to, yep. to not uh, overstepping yep. that boundary. Correct. Good question, though. We have a question from our colleagues in Nuit, France. Will the boilerplate be translated into other languages? It's um, a great question. Yeah. So we, we, we started. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> we, we will get there. Uh, I think we started from an English standpoint, just given the, it's kind of our, our voice from an organizational perspective. I think now we'll start to migrate that and start to look at opportunities to make translation, including yep. on our social media accounts, including on potentially if you want to do that with our website. I think it has to be very tactical and roll out. Yep. At least the most relevant languages, certainly. Yeah. Correct. And French belongs to that. <laughs> oui. Just making a statement. We have another question from uh, Lucas Mayer employees. Since they are not employees listed within the IFF network yet, how can they access um, the Brand Catalyst site? Um, I believe that they can request a login, but I, we work with, the, um, with our vendor on that to make sure that they're included. And the good thing is we have Antonio here in the room, so we, yep. we take this offline yes. anyway. Yes, correct. We have no more questions. Excellent. So then, first of all, thank you very much for participating on a global base. I'm, I'm very impressed and, and very happy that we got so many questions, even from remote locations, which I, I believe is, is really important. It's the first time in, in, in my time here with an IFF that we had a real good Q&A session, even with uh, people asking from some of these uh, other locations. I think that, that's a great, great step forward. And uh, before I finish the meeting, I, I would like to take the opportunity to, to thank the team which has worked courageously over months <laughs> on this project to make it happen. And uh, uh, um, Mike and Carol were, were leading this team, and I think they really did a great job. Please give them a big hand. With that said, uh, we are ending the global webcast, but I would like to, uh, to tell everybody to stay in the room for, for a sec.